Don't worry guys, I switched providers. It's a different colored backdrop. Obviously, I'm in a different office. Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. Hi, I'm Dr. N, it's nice to meet you. I see you're coming in for a general checkup, is that right? Is something wrong? I just came back from lunch, is there a baloney in my mustache? It's you. Oh, I see. You came from my brother's practice, didn't you? Hmm. Your brother, huh? Yeah, he's pretty terrible, so we're estranged. Um, I told my nurse to give me a heads up when I got one of his patients, though. Anyway, uh, I see you've been monitoring your A1C. I mean, you look just like him. We're not the same. I mean, look at how much nicer this office is. We have iPads, Wi-Fi. Did you get Did you get water up front? There's a water dispenser. It's just, it's, it's uncanny. I wear my stethoscope on the right. He doesn't even offer his people health benefits. He's got one backdrop. We have two here. Anyway, I was going to say that your A1C looks great and it's trending down. Have you been making diet and lifestyle changes? Huh. I guess you are different. Based on your other labs, I would actually hesitate to prescribe you anything. Um, if you'd like, I can refer you to the registered dietitian that we have on staff. Cuter too. I mean, I clean up okay. Hey everyone, it's me, Halise, endeavoring to persevere. As always, if you're new here, I make videos about my chaotic good life. Subscribe, follow, social media, all of the things. So this video is a two-part mini-series I'm doing on diet and lifestyle changes I'm currently making now that I'm firmly pre-diabetic. So if you missed part one, Make sure to check out the link in the Eye of Sauron. In it, I cover a lot of canopy, you know, real high level, just up here in the clouds, you know what I'm saying, type stuff about adjusting your diet for diabetes. And y'all responded in kind with some really great ideas, tips, and testimonials on your own journeys with prediabetes and diabetes. This comment in particular though, caught my attention. I enjoyed this video so much. I don't know if I'm pre-diabetic or diabetic at all because I have not been able to afford insurance for myself. I don't work and I have five kids. I haven't had blood work done in years, but I have a ton of questionable symptoms that have been there for years. I am doing what I can do to reverse certain things before I even get blood work done and maybe I will surprise myself. Just maybe. Now, I did follow up with them and respond to their comment, but I also wanted to take this moment to highlight a few resources that are available to people with children here in the United States, because I may be over here living my best child neutral life, but just remember this, okay? Just remember this. Halise is for the children, always, all right? I'm my mama though. I'm for the kids. Y'all may not know this, but the child tax credit of 2021 increased from $2,000 to $3,000 per child up to age 17 and $3,600 up to age six. And y'all, it worked. It worked well, okay? The policy helped cut child poverty in half in 2021, lifting 5.3 million people out of poverty, including 2.9 million children. Families who received the credit spent it mostly on rent, childcare, school expenses, and groceries, as well as catching up on other bills. Monthly CTC payments helped families in real time and kept them from falling into debt in the first place. And this matters because as we know, diabetes and prediabetes does not discriminate in regards to age. Not in the slightest, okay? You get diabetes, little baby. You get diabetes, 10 year old that loves to play soccer. You get diabetes with a little gestational twists. You know what I'm saying? Get into it, get into it. In fact, data shows that type one and type two diabetes is increasing among black and brown children, while non-Hispanic white children have mostly stayed the same. And just FYI, diabetes, though manageable, can be very expensive when gone unchecked. Y'all, did you know that for every $4 spent on healthcare here in the US, $1 of it goes towards someone with diabetes? That's a fourth of healthcare costs. According to the American Diabetes Association, the average cost of healthcare for a person with diabetes is $16,752 a year. More than twice the cost of healthcare for a person without diabetes. Y'all, I'm tired. 
All that to say, that's why things like the Child Tax Credit, WIC, SNAP, and CHIP are vital programs in the United States for families with children. In 2023, there's actually a chance to expand the Child Tax Credit permanently. And I'm excited about that, so families can get the help they need. Women can make their way back to work if they so choose, and the economy can keep moving forward. All right, so lifestyle changes I've made to help combat prediabetes. If I can recommend one thing, one canopy thing to you, it's move and move often. That's right, your smartwatch prompting you to get up and walk around for five minutes every hour, though annoying, is actually what you should be doing. Health is wealth, so they say. Remember, the struggle with diabetes is that your body has a hard time utilizing carbs and sugar in the food you eat to turn it into fuel. For type two diabetes, the data is interesting. Walking for just two to five minutes, 60 to 90 minutes after you eat a meal has been proven to help greatly reduce glucose spikes. That's right, the old folks you be seeing walking in the evenings after dinner time through the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying, are living their lives correctly. The reason for this is you're prompting your body to use the food you just ate for fuel and send that fuel to your muscles, which gets the sugar out of your bloodstream. Bada bing, bada boom. Something I try to incorporate into my life is walking or doing a low intensity exercise after my heaviest meal of the day, especially if it's a meal that went over my preferred carb ratio. I'll set my watch for 60 minutes after eating, and then when it goes off, I'll get up from my couch and either walk or grab some of my light home weights and do like a 10 minute squat variation, you know, just something. It's not much, but I can feel my heart rate kind of go up slightly, which is what I want. You know, I don't need to do an epic workout, just a little sum sum. I've also started standing more throughout my day. Earlier this year, I invested in a standing desk, not because of the pre-diabetes, but actually for carpal tunnel, y'all. Y'all don't get old, it's like the worst. <laughs> if it ain't one thing, it's another thing, it's a mess. Anyway, because of that, for most of my work day, I'm actually standing. Welcome to my home office. My hair has decided to do this for this portion of the video. So there you go. Mr. Hollies is in the corner, it's working. So I really like this desk because most sitting desks that are built, you know, there's like a standard height that they're at. They're actually too high for me because I'm quite short, I'm 5'1". And ironically, standing desks, even though they're technically made for standing, since they can go so low and so high, they actually work better for me in having my wrists be exactly where I need them to be for the carpal tunnels and all that kind of stuff. I really like the standing desk. It is a bit expensive though because it's an electric standing desk, so it's, it's quite pricey. If you're interested in it, I'll put it in the description for you to check out, but there are exponentially cheaper options out there. Something else I've actually seen is a desk that you just put on top of your regular desk. Like it's just a little like extra stand. If I can find it, I'll link to that one as well. Way more cost effective and you can just use it on top of a desk you already own. But it just kind of like scoots your computer or laptop just up and down. So that way you can go from sitting to standing easily. Ta-da. And you can also program it to different heights. So I have a height for it when I'm standing and then I have a height for it when I'm sitting on my little stool that I bought with it as well. I think I got this from Ikea for not very much money. And I purposely got a stool instead of a chair so that way I'd be engaging my core more. So when I am sitting, I'm still like actively doing a little bit of something. All right, back to the video. Finally, I still try to incorporate the recommended weekly workout regimen of 150 minutes a week. Generally, I run three to four times a week and supplement those runs with weightlifting. I rely a lot on my smartwatch to make sure that I'm getting my recommended amount of movement in a day. Some of my favorite fitness apps though are the Nike Run Club app from Nike. They have a 5K, half marathon, and full marathon training plan. I'm always low key on some sort of running training plan, whether I actually go to the race or not. Um, I just am always on one. They mix it up each week to provide a combination of long runs, speed runs, and recovery runs. They're also guided by Nike coaches from across the country and the world. So they're just very inspirational, uplifting, and you really feel like you're training for something. It's, it's pretty nice. For function, weight training, I have a subscription to the Freeletics app. I like this app because it gives a variety of workout plans based on what you do and don't have access to. So there's no excuse. If you don't 
like going to a gym. Great, here's a plan for you that you can totally do at home. If you have a few weights at home, awesome. Here's a plan for you. It's very customizable. I really enjoy the app. I've been a subscriber of it for a few years now. Finally, during the panorama, I discovered Rachel Gulata's workout channel here on YouTube. It's my favorite workout channel because her videos are catered to people who are introverted by nature. There's nobody being like too upbeat telling you to do another burpee, you know what I mean? Um, and she's also a cinematographer, filmmaker, so just it's just very pretty to look at. And also her dogs are just like so cute. So there's that. If you wanna see cute dogs while you work out, check her out. Now, let's conclude. The goal is to move more. I've given you a few ways to do so. It's annoying, but turn those features on your smartwatch back on if you have one anyway. Remember, just two to five minutes of walking every like 30-ish minutes can make a big difference. If you have the funds, consider investing in a standing desk. Finally, try to make a concerted effort to incorporate more cardio and strength training into your workout regimen. If you're someone who's completely new to working out, start with something basic like two times a week for 30 minutes. As I said in the first video, this is not a zero-sum game. Doing anything is better than doing nothing. Start with where you're at and slowly build up. A big thank you to my Patreon producers, patreon.com slash Halise. There you get early access to my videos, exclusive content, and merch. Again, I'm Halise, endeavoring to persevere as always. And if you're new here, I make videos about my chaotic good life. Subscribe, follow social media, and I'll see you when I see you. Also in the comments below, let me know if you like this kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? This was really fun to produce. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to give you stuff to cut to. <laughs>